Hello and welcome to this session in which we will start chapter 7. In chapter 7 we're going to be talking about bonds and what comes with bonds is interest rates. So interest rate and bonds goes hand in hand. Now this is the first chapter that we're going to be covering bond. In this chapter you're, you're going to learn everything that you need to learn about bonds. So before we start notice we're going to have you know seven different learning objectives. You need to understand what a bond is. So in, in other words, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about what a bond is. Make sure you understand what a bond is because you're going to need to find out the price of the bond, the yield to maturity. But if you don't understand how the bond work, you're going to find hard time doing the calculation. So understanding the bond is extremely important. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is a bond and how does it work? We're going to look at various things that deals with bonds. So the first thing is basically... What, are, what What is a bond? Bond is a form of debt. What is a debt? It's borrowing. It's a form of borrowing. Who borrows? Well, who borrows money? Corporations. Government. Okay, they wishes to borrow money from public on a long-term basis. It usually does so by issuing or selling Debt securities that are generally called bonds. So simply put, a corporation needs money. What can they do? They can go to the bank and get a loan. Same thing with the government. They can go to the bank and get a loan. Or they can go to the public and sell bonds, issue bonds. And what happened is this. Let's assume this is the corporation here. The corporation will give you the bond. This is the creditors. I'm going to call them people. I know this is not the right word, but I just want to keep it simple. And what do people give the corporation? The people gives the corporation money. And what do the corporation give the people back? They will give them back interest on the money, plus they're going to pay them the money back. So the way it works, the corporation goes to the, goes to the, goes to the people, to the general public, to borrow money. They give them a bond. The people give them the money and the corporation pays interest and the money back. And this is basically what a bond is. This is the, the simplest format. In this section, we'll describe the various features of corporate bonds and some of the terminology associated with bonds. You're going to see there's a lot of terminology associated with bonds. Then we will discuss the cash flow associated with the bond and how bonds can be valued using discounted cash flow procedures. So we're going to be using discounting. Remember I told you? Discounting is present value. So we're going to be using this technique to find the value of the bond. So let's look at bond features and prices. So starting with bond features and prices. Again, a lot of terminology that's going to be used. Make sure you understand it. As we mentioned earlier in, in the chapter, a bond is normally an interest-only loan. So a bond, we mentioned in the prior chapter that bonds pay interest only. So when when the corporation pays back the creditors, they pay them interest only. Eventually, they're going to pay them the principal, which is the original loan. But when they make the payment, it's an interest-only payment, meaning the borrower, which is the company, will pay interest every period but none of the principal will be pre repaid until the loan has ended. So the loan mature. So let's look at an example. Suppose Beck Corporation wants to borrow $1,000 for 30 years. The interest rate on similar debt for similar corporation is 12%. So the company wants to raise money. So they want to have $1,000. It could be $1,000. It could be $1 million or $10 million. It doesn't matter. And they want, this, they want to borrow this money for 30 years. And right now, the ongoing interest rate is 12%. Okay, so what's going to happen? Back will thus pay 12% every year for 30 years. So every year, if you gave back corporations, so if you are that individual and you gave them $1,000 today, they're going to give you $120 30 times. Why 30 times? 30 years. Plus, they're going to pay you the $1,000 when? In 30 years. Okay, at the end of 30 years, back will repay you the $1,000. As, as this example suggests, a bond is fairly simple financing arrangement. Of course, you sell the bond, the corporation will pay you only interest for the life of the bond, then they're going to have to give you your money back. Okay, 
There is, however, a rich jargon associated with bonds, so we will use this simple to define some of the more important terms. Again, you're going to see the same, the same thing called many different things, so don't let things confuse you. Okay. In our example, the $120 regular interest payment pro that back promises to pay are called the bonds coupon. Now, why are they called coupon? Okay. Back in the old days when the company used to issue a bond, okay, they would attach to the bond coupons. So this is coupons. Trying to draw coupons. Basically, you can cl clip them. So $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $120, $
this is about the rate hike. Rate hike means interest rate is going to go up, okay? Even one small increase by the Fed could have a sweeping impact on the U.S. and the world economy. This is what this individual is saying. So the point that I'm trying to make is interest rate over time could go up or interest rate over time could go down. Why is this important? Interest rate will have a major effect on bond, major influence on bond. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to understand, and we'll explain why shortly. But you need to understand that interest rate do changes. Why? Well, for, for many reasons, but why does it have an effect on the bond? Because the cash flow from a bond stays the same. So if you go if you go back to the previous bond, we said it's $1,000 bond times 12% equal to $120. This 12% and this $120, they're fixed. Fixed in a sense for the next 30 years, whoever carries the bond will only get $120 cash. But over the next 30 years, interest rate could go up or interest rate could go down. And what is that going to do? It's going to affect, it's going to influence the price of the bond, which we will see that later. But I want you to understand that the coupon, this 12% is fixed. And keep that in mind, the coupon rate is fixed because it's part of the bond contract. As a result, the value of the bond will fluctuate. So as interest rate goes up, as interest rate goes down, we'll prove it later, the bond will fluctuate. And here's how it works. And let me just give you a shortcut here. If interest rate goes up, your bond value goes down. So as interest rate goes up, your bond value goes down. And the opposite is true. When interest goes down, your bond value goes up. And let me explain it in numbers. Maybe it will make more sense to you. And again, I'm, I'm moving a little bit further into details, but I just want to get this out of the way because if you read it and you said, how does this work? Let's go back to this 12% bond. This bond is paying only 12% for the next 30 years. Is this a good bond? Well, for now, 12% is the, is the ongoing rate. So it's a good bond now. What happened if interest rate, if interest rate went down to 8%? Is this good or bad for you? If you carry the bond, well, that's good. Notice, if interest rate goes down, your bond value goes up. Why? Here's why. Because now investors, if they want to invest their money by buying bond, the bond will only pay them 8%. That's their option. And your bond that you bought a few years ago, paying how much? Paying 12. So everyone's going to run to you asking you if you're willing to sell your bond. So your bond value will go up. Okay, so if interest rate goes down, your bond value goes up. Now let's work the opposite example. Let's assume interest rate went up to 15%. Now you're saying, what does that mean? That just accept with me that the overall interest rate went up to 15% based on similar bonds as yours. So here's what's gonna happen. Now, if you have $1,000, you can take it and invest it at 15%. And your bond is paying only 12%. So guess what? Your bond will go down in value because your bond is not paying as much as the market. And this is a shortcut of why it goes up and down. We'll see it later on mathematically. We'll work the formula. In determining the bond value, in determining the value of a bond at a particular point in time, we need to know the number of periods remaining until maturity. So when we value a bond, the first thing we want to know is how many years remain or what's the time remain until the bond mature. So we need to know the number of periods. So we need to know number of periods remaining. That's one. We need to know the face value. We need to know the face value of the bond. We need to know the coupon rate and we need to know the market rate. So when we find the value of the bond, we need to know those four things, which we will work with this later on. Okay. So, and we need to know the market rate for similar bond. Okay. The interest rate required in the market on a bond is called YTM or yield to maturity. In short, this is called the yield. Given all this information, we can calculate the present value of the cash flow 
as an estimate of the bond current value. So to find the bond current value, we need those four things, which will, again, we'll work an example later on. This is just an introduction. We need those four things. For example, let's clean this up now since we already discussed this. For example, let's suppose Zainab. This corporation were to issue a bond with a 10-year maturity. The Zenith bond has an annual coupon of $80, so it pays you $80. Similar bonds have a yield to maturity of 8%. So the yield to maturity means what the market is paying. Yield to maturity is another word for market. So yield to maturity is also 8%. Based on the preceding discussion, Zenith bond will pay $80 per year for the next 10 years, which is the coupon. And year 10, Zenith will pay $1,000. Okay, the owner of the bond to the owner of the bond. The cash flow from the bond is shown in figure 7-1. What would this bond sell for? Okay, so let's go back and capture more. So let's take a look at this example to illustrate more. Let me see if I can just make this a little smaller than capture everything. Give me one moment. I'm not going to be able to capture everything. We'll capture as much as we can. So let's work with another bond to illustrate the point. So again, this bond is paying $80. $80. So here's, well, this is not a good capture. Let me just make it a little bigger. Sorry, just give me one moment. I want to capture as much as I can. Okay, there you go. So here's a picture of this bond. Here's a picture for this bond. So this bond, it's going to pay whoever holds it $80, $80, $80, $80, $80. $80, and $80, and another $80. How did we come up with this $80? It's 1,000 times the coupon rate of 8% equal to $80, plus the bond at year 10 will pay you $1,000, which is, what do we call this? We call this the face value, okay? So, as illustrated in figure 7-1, the Zenith bond has a cash flow, has a cash flow, have an annuity component. Notice, what do we call the same payment at the same interval? This $80 is called an annuity. This is what we learned in the prior session. Okay? And it has, in addition to the annuity, it's going to pay you one payment of $1,000. So notice, the bond has two components. It has an annuity component and a single payment. Single payment. Hopefully you notice this. So a bond is composed of two things. Annuity and single payment, which is the single payment is the face value. We thus estimate the market value of the bond by calculating the present value of the two components separately, then adding the results together. So to find the price of the bond today, so to find the price of the bond, all what we have to do, discount, so this is the steps how to calculate a bond. This is important. We need to find the present value of these two components separately, then add them up. So first we need to find out the present value of the annuity. Then we need to find the present value of the $1,000. Okay, let's find the present value of the annuity first. Now, the question becomes, what interest rate do, we, do, you, do you need to use when you're finding the present value of the bond? Here we go. Remember, this bond is paying 8%. This bond is paying 8%, which is 80 divided by 1,000 equal to 8%. This is the coupon rate. But in this example, we are assuming the yield to maturity is 8%. It means we are assuming that the market is 8%. So write this down. Make sure you write it down. Make sure you memorize it. Make sure you know it. When you find the price of the bond, when you find the price of bond, 
you always use the market rate. Now, the market rate and the coupon rate happens to be the same here, but I'm referring to the to this 8%. I'm referring to this 8%. You always use the yield to maturity or the ongoing market rate. So when you do the discount, you would always use the market rate. The only, the only reason you would use the coupon rate is to find the payment. So the only, the only reason you'd use the coupon rate is to find the cash payment, the cash payment. When you do the discounting, when you're calculating the discounting, when you're finding the present value, you would always use the market rate. Now they happen to be the same in this example because we are trying to illustrate a point, but we're gonna see shortly that the coupon rate and the market rate, they differ. So what the bond pays and what the ongoing market rate, they're two different things. So make sure you are aware of that. So let's first discount, find the present value of the $1,000 separately. So the $1,000 divided by 1.08 raised to the eighth power. And this is what we learned in the prior session, basically because we're gonna get this $1,000 once. So the $1,000 divided by 2.1589, which will give us a present value of $463.19. And cent. So this is the present value. This is the PV of the face value. But that's not the only thing that the bond will pay you. What else the bond's gonna pay you? The bond's gonna pay you $80 10 times. So this is the annuity. Now we need to find the present value of the annuity. I should use the tables. Give me one moment. So let's not rush anything. Let's, let's go through the calculation step by step. So basically, we're gonna take, first let's go back here. I wanna show you where these numbers are coming from. Um, we took one, uh, 1,000 divided by 1.08, which is the interest rate I equal to 8% and N equal to 10. So what we need to do, we need to go to the present value tables. We need to go to the present value tables. And this is the present value tables n equal to 10, and i equal to 8, and it's point four point four six three one nine. So the factor is 0. 0.46319, 10 periods at 8%, 46319. So what we do is if we take the $1,000 times 0. 0.43463, one nine, it's gonna give us 463.19. So this is coming, this, this is the same thing. Or you can take 1,000 divided by one plus the interest rate raised to the 10th power. I just wanna show you also how you come up with the table, how you, how you can find it from the table. So the $80 is an annuity. Now you could use the formula that you learned in the prior session, you know, one minus the present, present value annuity factor divided by R, or you can go to the tables I equal to 8% and equal to 10. And again, it's the same factors, but however, this is an annuity. So let's go to the annuity table. So I'm gonna to go to the present value of an annuity. This is future value. Let me go to the present value of an annuity and present value of an annuity, 10%, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 10 periods, 8%. Notice the present value of an annuity, and the factor is 6.71008. So I'm gonna take $80 times 6.710, and here they are rounded because they are a little bit different. 008, 008, here they rounded it. We're gonna get to the same answer. So if we take $80 times this, it's gonna give us 536.81, okay? So I just showed it to you how you come up with this answers using the table. Now we're going to add the face value, the present value of the face value, the PV of face value, and the PV of the annuity. Not equal, the PV of the annuity and the PV of the face value. So the 439 represent the present value of face value. And this number represent the PV of the annuity. And by combining those two, you will get the answer of $1,000. Now you might be saying, well, this is easy. Why did I have to go through this if I knew it's going to be $1,000? Well, 
Well, the reason this those calculations add, add up to a thousand dollar because the coupon, the reason why it end up to that, because the coupon equal to eight percent and the market was equal to eight percent. So the market rate was equal to the coupon rate, and that's why if that's the case, your bond will sell at one thousand dollar. This bond sells exactly for its face value. This is not a coincidence. The ongoing interest rate in the market is 8%, which is the yield to maturity. Considered as an interest-only loan, what interest rate does, does the bond have? Well, with an $80 coupon, this bond pays exactly 8%. So notice, the reason why you came up with the $1,000 is because the interest rate for the ongoing interest rate in the market and your rate are the same. So this is this is this is why it came up to that calculation now we're going to change this assumption so be ready to be able to work with a change of assumption okay now to illustrate let's change the let's change what can you change well you cannot change the bond you're going to change the market rate so what happens as interest rate changes suppose a year gone by and zenith bond has a nine year to maturity if the interest rate in the market has risen to 10%. So before you do any calculation, let's go back to what I just showed you earlier. Interest rate goes up. It did go up to 10%. What should happen to your bond? Your bond should go down. Now we're gonna exactly do the calculation. What will happen to the bond? To find out, we repeat the present value of the calculation with nine years instead of 10 years. Now remember, we no longer have we no longer have uh, 10 years to go we only have nine years remember part of the bond is to know how many years remaining and for this bond we only have nine years remaining so now the period is not 10 the period is nine and the when we do the calculation we're, we're going to have to use the 10 percent so now when we find the price of the bond r, r not i sorry r equal to 10 percent and n equal to nine. Nine periods and the rate is and the rate is ten percent. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go and find out what's the one thousand dollar worth. Well, let's go to the table, because the one thousand dollar is only we're gonna get the one thousand dollar only once. We're gonna go to the present value table. This is the present value. Now notice once again we're going to be using only nine periods not ten because already one year went by so nine periods and the interest rate is ten percent and the interest rate i'm sorry the factor the interest rate is ten therefore the factor is 0 0.42410 so so i'm going to take one thousand times 0 0.42410 one zero and that's going to give me four hundred and twenty four dollars and ten cent the reason i'm doing this because you, you already have the formula here if you want to use the formula i like to use the tables okay so so the present value of the bond is 424 the present value of the i'm sorry of the face value of the bond is 424 now i'm going to have to do the same thing r equal to 10 percent and equal to nine whatever you use here you have to use here the same factors but this is in annuity now i'm gonna have to find out how much is that 80 dollars worth so i'm gonna go i know i'm keep going back and forth because i want to make sure to do this slowly so you understand how you find the price of the bond don't underestimate those steps i know i'm going a little bit slowly but that's part of the learning process so now i'm gonna go to, through the same thing nine percent i'm sorry nine periods and the percentage is 10 5.75902 so I'm going to go take $80 times 5.75902, okay, rounded, but it's going to be $460.72. So now I add my present value of the face value, which is 420.10, and I add the present value of the annuity, and no surprise, the bond went down in value, went down from 1000 to... 884.82 now we sell the now we say the bond sells at a discount now the bond went down in value of course it went down why did it go down i already we already knew it's going to go down because interest rate went what happened to the interest rate interest rate went up so as interest rate goes up 
your bond value goes down because no one's going to pay you the thousand dollar because they can go out there and buy another bond at 10 percent so what they do they would say we will discount your payment whatever you have left at the ongoing rate and we will pay you whatever your bond is worth so that's why they would say we're not going to pay you the full one thousand dollar because the interest rate went up we'll pay you 885 now if they pay you 885 they're going to be earning 10 percent and this is what they want to earn okay now the bond sells for less than its face value. Why? Because the market rate increases to 10%. Considered as an interest-only loan of $1,000, this, this bond pays only 8%, which is its coupon rate. Because this bond pays less than the ongoing rate, investors are willing to lend you only something less than $1,000 promised repayment. So that's why they're going to pay less than the bond face value. Okay? And this process is called discount bond, not the process. The bond is called a discount bond, okay? The only way to get the interest rate up to 10% is to lower your price to less than $1,000. So if you want to sell your bond, no one's going to pay no one's gonna pay you $1,000, okay? So you have to lower your price. So whoever buys the bond, earn 10%. So the purchaser, in effect, has a built-in gain. For the for Zenus bond, the price of 8 $885 is $115 less than the face value. So an investor who purchased and kept the bond would get an $80 per year and would have $115 gain at maturity as well. This gain, it's not really a gain. I mean, I, I, I would not call it a gain. Compensate the lender for below interest, below market rate coupon. I mean, technically, I will not call it a gain because all what's happening, the reason you paid less is because you're getting less in interest. That's why you paid less. So it's not really a gain. It's to compensate you to make you whole. Whole means you're going to get the 10%. You want to get the whole. Okay? Another way to see why the bond is discounted by 115 is to know the $80 coupon is $20 below the coupon on a newly issued par value bond. Of course, the new bond, the new bond will pay anyone $100. Why $100? Because the new bond will be sold at 10 percent okay so there's so whoever carries your bond they're gonna get twenty dollars less these bond will be worth a thousand dollar only if you can if you're willing to pay one hundred dollars and you can change this once the bond is issued remember the eighty dollar is what did we call it? it's fixed it's part of the contract it's for 30 years that's how much you will pay in a sense an investor who would buy and keeps the bond gives up the twenty dollar for nine years so what's happening actually Whoever buys your bond, they're getting $20 less nine times, nine times. But how are they going to make it up? They're going to make it up with the $115 when they get it at maturity. So this is, so th there is really no gain. That's why I said there is no gain and no loss. You are exactly earning 10%. The investor is exactly earning 10%. Okay. So we're going to work another, another scenario. Now you might be asking, the other question is, why would Zenith bond sells for interest, sells, um, why would the Zenith bond sell for, for if interest rate had dropped by 2% instead of rising 2%? Well, now the opposite, we're going to assume the opposite. Let's make sure I did not skip anything. Okay. So what would happen? So what would happen if the interest rate actually did not go up two percent, but it dropped two percent? Let's go back. What did we say? If interest rate goes down, what happened to your bond? Your bond value will go up, and let's prove it. Let's prove it. Now we say your bond's gonna sell at a premium. Okay. So let's assume the exact opposite happened. The exact opposite happened. The exact opposite happened. Now, the Zenith bond has an 8% coupon, which is fixed, but the market is only 6%. So the market now, we're going to assume the opposite. We're going to assume a year later, the market dropped to 6%. So what would happen to the price of the bond? This is what we're trying to find out. What would happen to the price of the bond? Well, we're going to have to find the price of the bond using 6% and n equal to 9. n equal to 9, 9 periods, and r equal to... They didn't call it, and they call it T. I, I'm sorry, I just keep, and R equal to 6%. Now we're going to do the same exact calculation, but T equal to 9, 
r equal to 6. So all what we change is the market rate. We, we, we used a different assumption. The first thing is we find the present value of the $1,000. Let's go to the tables. I know this is, there's a lot of back and forth, but it's worth going through this. Let's go to the table, and you should be doing this simultaneously to see if you really know how you are coming up with this. So we're going to go to the first page. So period equal to, the period equal to 9. And the interest rate is 6, so the factor, the present value factor, is 0 0.59190. So we're going to take 1,000 times 0 0.59190, or 189, it doesn't matter, rounding. So the face value is going to be worth 591.89. So this is the face value of the bond. We're going to do the same thing for the payment. We're going to take the payment, multiply it by... T equal to 9, R equal to 6%, going to the present value annuity table, and you're going to find, I'm not going to go and do it because I think you should be able to do it by now. The factor is, the present value annuity factor is 6.8017. We'll take the payment times the factor, and this is the present value of the annuity. Now notice, if we take the present value of the face value, so this is the face value, and this is the annuity, and those are the present value of those two components, we find out that the bond sells at $1,136.03. Notice now your bond is selling $136 in access to the par value. Now why? Why? Because your bond is higher than the market. Your bond is paying 8% and the market is paying 6 So everyone's going to jump to buy your bond and as a result your bond price will go up because they're going to assume they want to earn the market the ongoing market rate, but your bond is paying more. So what happened, they're getting $20 higher than what the ongoing rate is. The ongoing rate is. And if we take the $20 and discount it, so they're paying for this extra $20. So if we'll take the $20 discounted for N equal to 9, R equal to 6%, going to the annuity table, you will take $20 times the factor. This is the extra premium that the investors are paying for. Okay? So, based on our example, we can now write the general expression for the value of the bond. If the bond, uh, if a bond has a face value, F paid at maturity, a coupon C paid, paid per period, and a T period to maturity, and a yield of R period, its value is, this is the formula. So what you have to do, you have to find the present value of the face value, the present value of the face value and the present value of the coupon. We keep, we keep saying this, we, we did this like three times already. Okay, so this is what the bond is. This is how you find the price of the bond. It's a, no, it's, it's two pieces. This is a piece of the bond and this is the other piece. So one piece is the coupon payment, the annuity, and the other piece is the face, face amount or the par value. You discount them using the market rate. What market, what do you use? You'd use the market rate to discount. When you go to the tables, you would always use the market rate. You only use the coupon rate is to find C, the payment. I know the C, coupon. So C, coupon. This is only reason you would use the coupon rate. All right. So hopefully we learn from this lesson how to find the price of a bond. Now, a note about corporate bond, because again, you may see this in accounting. So I want to make sure you're aware of this, or you may see it in a homework. Who knows? In practice, bonds issued in the United States usually make coupon payment twice a year. And to be more specific, corporate bond. So corporations. So if an ordinary bond has a coupon rate of 14%, then the owner will get a total of 140 per year. This 140 will come in two payments, $70 every six months. Suppose we are examining such a bond, the yield to maturity is quoted at 16%. So let's assume we are finding the price of this bond and the market rate is 16%. So the coupon, let me just put it up here. Let me just break this problem down because this is important. The coupon is 14%, but here's what we're gonna add. We're gonna add it semi-annually. So it's not annually, the interest rate is semi-annually. They're gonna pay you 7%, then another 7%. And the market rate, is 16 percent the market is 16 so what's going to happen to your bond your bond the first thing you need to know the bond sells at a discount because i'm paying less than the market okay 
but we're going to find the calculation, but we're going to have to make slight adjustment. Bond yields are quoted like APRs, the quoted rate equal to the actual rate per period multiplied by the number of periods. In this case, with a 16% quoted yield and a semi-annual payment, the true yield is 8% every six months. So since this is 16% and you're comparing this to the coupon, so you're going to say it's 8%. So this bond is 8 per, and the market rate is 8% semi annually so if the if the if the bond is paying semi-annually then the market rate is also will have to be treated as semi-annual and the bond mature in seven years so n equal to i'm sorry not n t the number of periods t equal to seven what is the bond price so now we know everything we know t equal to seven seven years but remember this is seven years but how many payments seven years how many payments remember seven years but we have 14 payments, not seven payments, because this bond pays interest semi-annually. Okay, so let's see how we can find the bond. Based on our discussion, we know that the bond will sell at a discount. We already determined this because its coupon rate, 7% every six months, is lower than the market rate of 8% every six months. We already know this. So if our answers exceed the 1,000, it means we made a mistake. It means the bond will sell less than 1,000. To, ex to get the exact price, let's do the calculation. How do we find the price of the bond? Two things. We have to find the present value of the face value, and we have to find the present value of the annuity. So let's find the present value of the face value. The, va the face value is 1,000. What do you use for interest rate? When you, when you find the present value, you'd use market. And since the bond pays semi-annually, you have to adjust the market rate semi-annually. Therefore, notice they use the market rate, 8%. And notice, since the bond pays semi-annually, the periods are 14, not 7. So you have to be very careful when the problem state, the bond pays interest semi-annually. You have to adjust two things. You have to adjust the market. So if you divide the market by 2, you take the period, the number of periods, and you multiply it by 2. Because the, the market is 16, 16 divided by 2 equal to 8, 2 times 7, which is the number of periods, equal to 14. So be careful to adjust both the market rate and the number of payments. So if you're adjusting the market rate, you have to adjust the number of payments. So if the bond pays interest quarterly, you have to divide the market by 4, multiply the number of periods by 4. If, if it's monthly, then you have to divide the market by 12, and multiply the periods by 12. So whatever you do to the, to, the, to the rate, you have to adjust to the market. Otherwise, the two numbers are not comparable. Now you can go to the tables if you'd like to look at T equal to 14, N equal to 8%. Take the 1,000 multiplied by that factor, and the factor should be 0 0.340. Or you could use the formula 1,000 divided 1.08 raised to the 14th power. Long story short, the, the present value of the face value is 340. Now you have to go to the tables to find the present value of the annuity, which is $70, because this bond paying $70 every six months for seven years, which has 14 payments. Therefore, the number of payments T equal to 14 and R, not N, R equal to 8%. So if I go to the table, to the annuity table, and I'll find the factor is 8.2442, I will take $70 multiplied by this number, I'll get 577. So this is the second component of the bond. Therefore, if I take the face value, the present value of the face value, plus the present value of the annuity, I'll get the price of the bond, which I already, which I already predicted it will be a discount bond. And indeed, my answer is a discount bond. So to calculate the effective yield on the bond, 8% paid semi-annually. Remember, we, we, we worked the formula in the prior session. 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to the second power minus 1. So the effective yield is 16.64 because remember, it's 8% semi-annually every six months. Okay. So I hope you are getting the gist on how we calculate the price of a bond. You have to know how to do this. This is critical for this session, critical for your understanding. As we have illustrated in this section, bond prices bond prices, and interest rate always move in the opposite direction. Okay, when interest rate goes up, your bond value goes down. When interest rate goes down, your bond value goes up. 
So when interest rate rises, a bond value will decline. When the interest rate falls, the bond value rises. Even if you are considering a bond that's riskless in a sense that the borrower is certain to make all payments, there's still, there's still risk in owning a bond as we will discuss next. So, so let's look at, let's discuss interest rate and risk. And we need to understand how risk and interest rate work together. So this is basically some of it is discussion. We're going to look at a graph. So, okay. So the risk that arises for bonds owner from fluctuation interest rate is called interest rate risk. So when the, when the price goes up and down, when the interest rate goes up and down, the risk is called interest rate risk. How much risk rate risk a bond has depends on how sensitive it's price to interest rate changes. So how much risk, depending on how sensitive you are. And how sensitive you are depend on two things. How sensitive a bond is depend on two things. The time to maturity, that's one thing, and the coupon rate. And let's th think of it from a logical perspective, okay? All things are equal. The longer the maturity, the longer this, the longer your bond, the higher the risk. The longer your bond, the time to maturity, it means there's more time. And if there's more time, it means there's more risk because as, as, as you have more time to deal with this bond, the market could fluctuate much, much more. So the longer the time horizon, the longer is the risk. And obviously the opposite is true. The shorter your time horizon, the shorter is your maturity, the less is the risk. Everything else is equal. Coupon rate, think about your coupon rate. Well, guess what? The higher your coupon rate, the less is the risk. Why? Because you have a high coupon rate, high enough or high relative to the market where if there's any changes, I mean, the interest rate, it's going to change. But if your coupon rate is already low, the, the, um, uh, the market rate might, might exceed your coupon rate quickly. Let's assume you have a bond of 6%, paying coupon 6%. Well, if the, if the market rate now is 5, there's only 1% between you and the market. But if your coupon is 10 and the market right now is 5, you have the interest rate will have to change by 500 basis point or 5% to exceed your market. So the higher your coupon rate, the lower is the risk. And your, the lower your coupon rate, the higher is the risk. Okay, and this is basically intuitive. So all other things equal. The longer the time to maturity, the greater the risk. All other things equal, the lower the coupon rate, the greater is the risk. And hopefully you know this. And let me show it to you. The, uh, for example, if right now, maybe I can show it to you on a, on a graph. If right now, um, right now the market is 4%. This is the market. And the, your coupon is 5. Your coupon rate is 5. So the only buffer zone between you and the market is 1%. So now your bond would still sell at a, would still sell at a premium, but once the market exceeds 5%, because yours is fixed, you might be in trouble or the bond will go down in value versus if your coupon rate if your coupon rate is let's assume 10%, your coupon is 10%, you have a 6% basically buffer between you and the market changes. So this is basically what we are saying. We will illustrate the, these two points in figure 7-2. We compute a plot prices under different interest rate scenarios for 10% coupon bond with maturity of one year, one year and 30 years. Notice the slope of the line connecting the prices is much steeper for 30 years. Let's take a look at the graph as we do the discussion because this is an interesting thing so this is what we're trying what we're going to try to show is just show on the graph what we just said so so notice the slope of the line connecting the price is much steeper for 30 years than it's for one year so notice for 30 year bond for th here's the number the interest rate and the bond value as time goes as time as time goes out as time goes out your bond is riskier it has lower price it, it's a, it, it's a steep bond versus 
The same thing with interest rate. The higher the interest rate, notice the higher the interest rate, the higher the interest rate, the better is your bond. The better is your bond because you have more protection. So what this graph is showing is a 5% interest rate. The one-year bond will have a value of $1,047. A 10-year bond will have a value exactly at 1000 a 15-year 15, a 15 interest rate was going to give you a bond value of 956 and a 20% interest rate is going to give you a bond value of 20. So notice it's going, it's going down. Simply put, once again, the longer your bond, the longer the period, the higher is the risk. And the higher the interest rate of your coupon, the lower is the risk. And that's why you have this steep down interest rate. Now, when we say everything else is equal, what do we mean by assuming everything else is equal? Okay. The other thing to know about interest rate is like most things in finance and economics, it increases at a decreasing rate. In other words, if we compare a 10-year, one-year bond, we would see that a 10-year bond has a much greater risk, of course, because it's a longer time horizon. However, if we were to compare 20 year bond to a 30 year bond, you would find a 30 year bond has somewhat greater interest rate risk because it has a longer maturity. But the difference in the risk would be fairly small. Yes, I mean, again, it's, this is not linear. So keep that in mind that the risk is not linear. It doesn't mean if you one year longer, it means you're going to have, you know, five points of risk with two years, it's going to have to be 10. The risk would differ. That's all what you need to know. The reason that bonds with lower coupon rate have greater interest rate risk is essentially the same. As we discussed earlier, the value of the bond depends on the present value of its coupon and the present value of the face value. If the two bonds with different coupon rate have the same maturity, then the value of one with the lower coupon is proportionally more dependent on the face value to be received at maturity. Of course, as a result, all other things equal, its value will fluctuate more as interest rate changes. Put another way, the bond with the higher coupon has a larger cash flow early in its life, so the value is less sensitive to changes. Of course, because your interest rate is much, much higher. So here's what we need to know. Bonds are rarely issued with maturity longer than 30 years. It doesn't mean they don't. They do, but rarely. However, low interest rate in, re in recent years have led the issuance of much larger terms issues. In 1990, Walt Disney issued a bond called the Sleeping Beauty with 100-year maturity. Also, Bell South, Coca-Cola, and Dutch bank giant ABN AMRO all issued bonds with 100-year maturities. Why? Because they want to lock low interest rate. These companies wanted to lock in historical rate for a long period of time. Because why? Because right now, if the interest rate is low, you sell bonds because your rate is fixed, your payment is fixed, and it's low. Okay? The current record holder for corporation looks to, to be a Republic National Bank, which sold Bonds with 1,000 year to maturity. So there you go. <laughs> so they sold the bond and whoever buys the bond, they're going to get their money 1,000 years after 1,000 years. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to give this bond to your kids or grandkids and this bond will be traded. Although somewhat rare, 100 year bond issues still occur. So 100 do occur. In January 2014, the French utility company Electricité de France sold 700 million in 100 year bond in the US. So it does, it does happen. Okay. And here's they're showing you the effect of those long year, uh, long maturity bond. Okay. Um, finding the yield to maturity. So they may, you, you might be asked to find out what is the market rate for the bond, finding the yield to maturity. And once we have, once we have to find R for a bond, so it means we're going to have to find the market rate. We could use the formula. So let's look at an example to see how the formula work. Frequently, you, we will know a bond price, coupon rate, and maturity date, but we don't know yield to maturity. Yield to maturity is the same thing as the market rate. For example, suppose we're interested in a six year, so it's a six year, 8% coupon, a broker quotes the price at 955.14. So they're telling you the present value of the bond is 955.14. And the bond is a factor of its annuity and factor of it is face value. So this is the face value formula. And this is the annuity formula. And we know the payment is $80. We know the 
period is 6. So we know the period is 6. But what we are missing is from this calculation, we don't know how much we are earning. What is R? What's the interest rate? What's the yield to maturity? Well, you could set up the formula to find R. So this is basically, in a sense, it's going to be a trial and error if you're going to be using this method. Okay? Um, so what you can do is, you know, if we do it, we're going to find out that the yield to maturity is between 8 and 10%. Basically, it's going to give you an approximate figure. Okay? Um, you, you, can, you can guess the yield to maturity. The yield to, the yield to maturity, think about it. If the bond's selling at a discount, if you're paying, let's think about it. If you're paying 8%, if the bond paying 8%, okay, it means the rate, the market rate, which is the yield, the market rate, must be higher than 8%. So all you know is it's higher than 8%. But if you if you do trial and error, you will find out it's around, you know, well, let's see what they find out. It's 8.38%, okay? So it's less than 9, so it's 8.38%. Now, once again, for those type of situation, what you have to do, you have to use a calculator. You have to use your calculator to find the yield. Okay. So how to how to find the the yield using a financial calculator? And here's the steps how to find the yield using a financial calculator. Once again, I do not go over the financial calculator. You have the steps here of a typical calculator, but here's the steps. Okay but you have to do this yourself or you could use the spreadsheet you could use the spreadsheet so this is basically an introduction for bonds um, you could read the other you know the, you could read this current event story and you could you could read bond yields so on and so forth um, those two examples but i think i covered the basics of bonds now again this topic is much, much more involved, we're starting to scratch the surface. But I cannot emphasize the idea that finding the price of the bond is important. And the key is to remember the bond is composed of two things. And once again, face value and payments. Discount this amount and discount this. So this is the payment is the same thing as the annuity. And the face value, you discount it using market rate you would use the market rate you'd use the market rate the next thing we're going to look at is again in this topic in this chapter it's going to be a lot of lot more is more about bond features so we're going to look at different bond features if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class